Look, you know and I know that the most popular style of playing football manager is ultra high press gag and press. That's the end of that one then, isn't it? <laughs> so today, instead of fighting that, we're gonna lean right into it and make the most intense pressing tactic of all time. <laughs> That's what we want. What's up everyone? Welcome to Barcelona. Now Disclaimer, we're not going to finish with Barcelona. I've made two versions of this, and this is the first one we did with Barca. But I prefer the other one, but I'll show you this one first. You might have noticed we beat Vallecano 10-0 with this tactic. And there was also an eight-goal away win at Celta Vigo. And to be fair, it did well against Real Madrid as well. Look how much we're pinning them back. They can't get out. 3-0 in that one. But alas, they didn't win the league. They finished second, only losing four matches. One was against Madrid, but... Overall, it was bloody good. And they scored 100 times, conceding 31. It was just an elite Real Madrid team that stopped them winning the league. And this is what we did. This is the one I've called press till you drop. Every position is basically going for it. Even the two central defenders are on stopper. So when I was putting it together, I just wanted the most aggressive pressing player roles I could possibly think of. And it all goes with the player instructions. Now, in possession, in transition, they all come into play, but mostly it's all about out of possession. You'll have seen every tactic under the sun that you can download with this sort of setup. Much high defensive line, high press, much more often get stuck in. It's kind of that horrible meta word for this year's FM. Wow. However, to emphasize that even more, we had to get the player roles on max pressing as well. So obviously two pressing forwards to put pressure on the back line, defensive wingers to put pressure on the fullbacks, Two ball winning midfielders to put pressure on absolutely everybody. And the one I've never done before, and it worked quite well surprisingly, was two centre backs on stopper duty. So admit it, how many of you use stopper duty? Oh, no. And if you do, how many of you used two? What it basically means is your defender jumps forward to try and stop attackers coming at you. So we've both got them jumping forward, which will probably leave a gap in behind. So in fact, if they miss the ball, they end up there. And that's why we've got a sweeper keeper on attack to attempt to clean up their mess. So overall, it worked really well. Opposition passes per defensive action. We're top of that, so we're stopping teams playing. The super high defensive line. We even created the most chances in the league, more than Real Madrid. This is the impressive one. Possession won. Top of that by an absolute mile. High intensity sprints. I won't lie, I probably expected us to be a bit higher than that. Crosses, so that's the type of play with the defensive wingers. Fouls, disappointed to be under Hatafe, but it's probably Mason Greenwood fouling everybody. And final third passes against per match, we conceded the less because we're pressing teams really high up. So a good season overall, but not fantastic. There was a couple of defeats in there, mostly in the Champions League. But it's good overall, and I'll stick that in Patreon. You can obviously improve it by just calming one of these boys down to maybe a normal central defender, one or maybe two, and then changing a player role or two. But if you want intense football, there's a 4-4-2 for you. Next up, I went to Juventus to try the second version, and this one I kind of like a bit more because it's a little bit more balmy. So I was trying again, and there's a few player roles I definitely wanted. I definitely wanted pressing forwards up front. All of them will be pressing forwards in one form or another. I definitely wanted a ball win midfielder because they just seem to get everywhere. And I 100% wanted Omega Luke's new favourite player role, defensive wingers, because they just push them fullbacks right back. So if we're trying to gig and press, that's the perfect one because they're going to be on the fullbacks like a rash so those roles were definitely going to be part of this but i didn't want to do a 4 4 2 we've just done that we know that kind of works so we'll try something a bit different for juve in the friendlies it was safe to say i was having a bit of trouble getting it working and ac milan murdered us 5-1 however when we went back into the lab we started to get things ticking in our first league game in Serie A, we beat into milan no less this is super impressive and especially considering we're playing away from home then we played AC Milan in the league, not the friendly, the league, and it was a complete different story. So nearly overnight, we've gone from getting battered 5-1 to drawing 1-1. Now what comes with a high tempo, high press approach is fast, fast football. Look at this. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> now if you're pressing high, there is a chance. If you don't win it back, you're going to leave all sorts of gaps, as you can see here. But if you get it right, you're going to spend most of your time in the opposition half. So with version 2, the early signs were good. Just one defeat and we'd had wins against Inter and Arsenal. And we got locked in the set out of possession instructions. Much higher defensive line, high press, max trigger press, prevent distribution, get stuck in, step up more, everything. The gaps are there, but if we win it back up here, it's not a problem. Up front, we had three pressing forwards, one on attack and two either side of him on support. This meant the opposition defence had no time to breathe at all. 
quite often that happened. So in midfield, we had three. We had our two defensive wingers that are vital for this and one sole ball winning midfielder who will just cover everywhere. Most of the time, it's been Juventus' new signing Douglas Louise doing that job. As you can see here, when the ball's anywhere near him, he's going to swallow it up. Now, defensive wingers are great. They shouldn't be called that because they are actually really aggressive. Now, watch this. As this comes in, we've got our pressing forwards there, all three of them, all over the centre-backs. They have no time on the ball. They try and dally on it. We'll have that. When you press teams so much, they have no options. Now, he's getting pressed by the ball win midfielder and the defensive winger. And look, they've got no one to aim at. So they just end up hoofing it to absolutely nobody. And we score off this one. The defensive winger goes wide. He's got three pressing forwards pushing against the centre-backs. Pings it over. Result. Now, at the back, I was a bit torn on what to do, but I went with one stopper to jump in and one standard. Now, you'll notice I've got two inverted wing-backs on attack. Why is that? because they're going to spend most of their time up here. So when we're trying to press high, if we lose the ball, they're going to be in a better position to press straight away rather than being stuck back here. It makes for a pretty wild looking average position because everyone's pressing high with the ball. There you see it. Front to back, we've got a, like a box five in there. It's basically a five five. Without the ball, we drop into that. I mean, it's messy, isn't it? It's messy. For an overall shape of that, your number five, Douglas Louise on Locatelli in this case, they've got to be on it as the ball winning midfielder. It was a fun tactic. We finished second, so not amazing, but definitely had some perks. And similar to the Barca version, this one was top of all the key metrics. Crosses from your defensive wingers, high intensity sprints, top of that one. Crosses attempted, passes per defensive action, chances created, final third passes against. Even yellow cards were top of that. That is Geg and Press, full press in action in full flow. Top scorers in Serie A with 86, conceding 40, but there is some big gaps there. But it just shows what you can do between that 4-4-2 and this 4-3-3. There is the final version of it. Three strikers up front doing a lot of work. Then we've got the combo of the wingers and the inverted wingbacks and the lone shark in central midfield. Now, we were in the Champions League. In the knockouts, we drew Aston Villa. I know, I know. But check out this press here from the pressing forward. As Villa try and play out, Chiesa says not today. Takes it off Matty Cash. A cracking goal on the break. That gave us a bumping 6-2 win over Villa. It's been a long time coming that. A long time coming. In the second leg, Villa beat us 6-1 and knocked us out. Cue Ricky Gabeski 